Hi creatives, Dr. Diazio here. Wanted to send you this video. I know that you have your final research presentation due for scalability class today. And I wanna provide some steps for the next few weeks to help you succeed for the midterm. So if you remember, you had a check-in presentation. So what was the check-in presentation? It was for me to push you so you start research and trying to understand the problem that we face. The challenge that's been given to you because you are innovators at Maverick Innovator case that, that was the brief that you're given and the number of four points that you have to hit over the course of the semester. And you had to look into what is Internet of Things, what are other cities doing, what are the challenges here in the Sun Coast pro region, how are they different or the same in other places, what are the big groups of problems that are happening here in the region and to understand how the Internet of Things are, are solving them in different parts of the world maybe. These are other cases, right? You don't always have to reinvent the wheel. You just have to find out what other creatives are doing or other innovators are doing and possibly apply that here. It's a way of growing. It's a way of research. This is what consultants do. And many of you will learn that part in the student consulting and design thinking class uh, when you continue on. So we are learning best practices from other people, and that's why we're doing the research. And we're le learning that there's a lot of problems here, and can we group them and make them in some sort of narrative based off of the data and research that we do? Here, people talk about resiliency, they talk about traffic, they talk about health care, they talk about homelessness. But those are unique here, and you have to find those bigger groupings, and you have to be able to portray and communicate that in some sort of narrative. And that was the point of the uh, check-in research presentation. And then you met with Gary, and some of you did a great job in taking that feedback of what you got from Gary to apply that to your um, to this presentation that's coming up and do, do. You know, and the point was to get more feedback, to know where you can do more research, to know where you can... Uh, collect more data. Uh, remember, part one and part two is data collection, is research. You are expected to master that. Doesn't mean that it has to be always in the point by point in the presentation, but you should master all of those points in order to be, to demonstrate that you have a comprehension of the problems and you have some sort of confidence and skills and expertise in the problem. No one can solve a problem that they don't understand. And you need to do all that research and touch on all those points and demonstrate that in the video in order to show me that you know what you're talking about. You can't solve a problem you don't know about and that's why we have so much research up front. Next, you have this final research presentation. And while I call it the final research presentation, it is should be to a point where you have these bigger groupings of what the major problems are here in the Sun Coast region. You're finding trends that may intersect each other. Uh, remember your other classes, your other classes, principles of management. And some of you may have taken it with me. It talks about five major forces that come up with trends that impact businesses and organizations. I think it's from chapter seven in the management book. But you should be looking up at demographics, political trends, legal trends, social trends, uh, market trends, competitor trends, the, all these different trends that influence a business or influence a, a problem. These are the trends that you should be looking at. Technology trends being another. Uh, so that's why I have part one and two. You still need to use the skills that you were supposed to learn in the other classes. And some of you demonstrate that, but some of you seem to forget and you start you make your life harder because you're not learning from the past that you've done and you're not applying that learning here. So you kind of reinvent the wheel, which makes the work so much harder. So work smarter, not harder. Next, uh, the final presentation. So you, after you group these major things that you find out, you should say some of these are more important than others and therefore you will choose which direction. But again, we're not solving big, big problems. We wanna solve a very small problem that can be solved and a minimal viable product within the next six to 12 months. So we're not going to put a train in. That costs billions of dollars and highly political and there's no money in Florida and our taxes would have to be raised. And So 
we have to understand what the problem, the challenge is that we, we've been asked to, to solve. A problem that you can fix in the next six to 12 months. That's why it can be small, very narrow. And because of that, that's what you will end at in your final presentation uh, or partly, and then certainly for the midterm presentation. So between the final research presentation and the midterm presentation, you should still continue to do research, but now you are learning the tools within the class. And you might say, how are these tools relevant? So these are the exact tools that organizations, institutions, governments, societies use to innovate. I think you would agree if you are drawing a picture or painting a picture or fishing or playing a football team, playing football, playing a football team, playing football, right? You don't always have one tool. You have many tools, right? Sometimes you hand the ball off to whoever the running back for the Tampa Bay Bucks is. Chubb? No, not Chubb. Maybe Chubb. Hand it off to the running back. Oh, for Fournette, right? You hand it off to Fournette, and he does one thing. But you don't always hand it off to Fournette. Sometimes you want Brady to throw it, right? Sometimes you want to throw a screen to Mike Evans. Sometimes you want to throw it deep to... Godwin, I think is his name, or sometimes you want to throw it to Kronk, right? Because he can box the people out and catch it in the end zone because of his size. Sometimes you might not sneak it with Brady, who does it so well. So the point is you don't always use the same play, the same tool when you're playing football. And when you're fishing, right, you might need a bigger pole when you're, you're doing deep sea diving or not deep, deep sea fishing. You might have a bigger hook. You might have different bait. You might have... Uh, you know, torque, different line. Uh, you might be in a different boat. You might have depth finders, different depth finders. You might have shade. You might not have shade. You might have a beer. You might have a margarita. Who knows? But the point is, you're not using all the same tools if you're trying to fish for snook compared to big tuna compared to uh, shark, I guess. You know, I don't, I don't know. Do you, do you fish for sharks? I don't know. I, I don't I have no idea. Catfish. How about that? You don't use the same tool, and you don't use the same tool when you innovate, right? B different problems have different tools or toolkits. And the point of learning the content from the class is what innovation is and all the different tools, techniques, frameworks, technology, approaches, styles, assumptions, that organizations and institutions, cities, governments, and societies use to innovate. And you have to go out and find what other cities are doing and see how these different tools and techniques can be applied, and maybe you can apply them to our city problem, our regional problem. And the Internet of Things falls like this. All of those tools can be directly tied to the Internet of Things. So you're learning about the Internet of Things is because it's creating a whole new way of collecting data, a whole new way of monitoring behavior, a whole new way of being able to react in real time or to help drive knowledge from the bottom up instead of the top down, which is a big and several frameworks within the innovation frameworks that we, we touch. So we'll say that Internet of Things is one way of a way of, of uh, executing the innovation tools, techniques, and frameworks that you can apply to the Internet of Things to the challenge that you pick. Next, I want you guys to think and really work on storytelling. All stories have a beginning, middle, and end. You learn this in speech class. You learn this in the writing class. You learn this in, if you took principles of management with me, Beginning, middle, and end. We're, we have to have some sort of a logical way of presenting the information. When you watch a TV show, when you watch a movie, when you read a book, right? there's always some conflict in the middle. We're finding what that conflict is right now. right? Is it homelessness? Is it um, traffic? Is it water resistance, pollution, blah, blah, blah? These are all conflicts to how we want to live society or work, be in betterment of society. And now we have to find, and the methods would be the innovation tools that we use, that you apply, and the case studies and the best practices to find a solution, a climax. And then how are you going to make sure that everyone ha is happy ever after? Where is that feedback loop 
to continue to better that solution, to improve it, to expand it, to scale it. Now you get the point. So work on the presentation to make it more of a story, a narrative, instead of just kind of fragments and n there's no logical tools, no logical connection, no, no thread woven. Um, so these are some points and some tips. Again, I want to meet with you. I'm also disappointed that no one from the class showed up for our Q&A and master class with James Doherty. Where else are you going to get a free master class from someone who has a top 100 Apple podcast free to you here in the entrepreneurship class, Dr. D's class? So again, I'm disappointed that you guys didn't show up. This is how you network. This is how you learn from people who took this class. This is how you expand your network. This is how you grow as a professional. We need to be more professional. We can't be just winging it. This is a professional class. I expect you to be entrepreneurs and innovators are great if they're professional. Some of you aren't there yet. Some of you guys think this is high school or a joke or some sort of comedy show. Level up. This is a professional class. I don't know what you do in the other classes. Don't care. This is what the entrepreneurship program is. We make sure that you become better professionals after you walk out. And for all of you, I'm not seeing that. Taking baby steps, but this is a junior level course and we need to be much better. Because right now, I'm not sure uh, where you guys are falling. So show me for the next presentation. Show me for the midterm. Again, I'm willing to meet you. If you want to take that extra step and you're willing to make that extra effort, I'm willing to make that extra effort. And I've met some with you before. But uh, you guys got to push through. Again, I told you in the beginning, 10 to 12 hours per week for this class. If you want to be a superstar, that's what it takes. If you want to be mediocre, go right ahead. But 10 to 12 hours to be a superstar. Again, some of you are there. Many of you are taking steps. But some of you are still behind the eight ball. I can't figure out how you cannot upload a video. We're seven weeks into the semester almost. Level up. Put the time in. If you don't know, call the help desk. Call me. Contact contact one of your colleagues. I'm not sure why some can do it and some can't. If you're having trouble, reach out. I'm willing to help you. But don't tell me after that you had problems. You have to sort this out before. This is what professionals do. All right, signing off. Uh, make sure you listen to this. And if you did, put thumbs up. I need to see thumbs up in the comment box so I know you're listening to it. All right, signing off.